Welcome our esteemed viewers to Optical TV, where we are natural at the core. Watch and enjoy our transformative program content and kindly don't forget to hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel at Optical TV. Connect with us on TikTok at Optical.tv and again, kindly don't forget to follow. Enjoy! Welcome those who are watching us online, we welcome you. Uh, those who are here, I believe we are going to be blessed today. We are focusing on a very interesting topic. Uh, I want us to first take our reading from 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 17. If you are at home and you have your Bible, you can open that. But uh, if you don't, maybe you can just write it down. Yeah, uh, 2 Samuel uh, chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 17. Yeah, I think uh, one of us can read it for us. 2 Samuel 5.17 2 Samuel 5.17 says mm -hmm. But when the Philistines heard that they they had anointed David king over Israel all the Philistines came up to seek David mm -hmm. and David heard of it and went down to, to the hold Amen Shall we pray? Uh, Father we want to thank you for this word as it comes to us today I pray it is coming with accuracy it is coming with power in the mighty name of Jesus Thank you for those who are listening. Almighty Father, may they receive it. May it be planted in their heart and produce a harvest. We give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Uh, I hope those of you are watching at home have had a wonderful holiday. Uh, people are coming back from the holidays and I believe you had a blessed time uh, with family and friends and all that. Today we are focusing on a very interesting word uh, which I know if you are careful to listen and to uh, be attentive, it's going to be a blessing to many people. So, uh, to Mesomeo Apo, when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about it and they went down to the stronghold. I want to encourage us that there are warfares, there are things that never come to your life until greatness is announced. Until Great news is announced. You see, it says when the Philistines had well, is clear, that David had been anointed king over Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. And I've written in my point number one, greatness attracts warfare. Greatness attracts warfare. So uh, we have we have to understand that if you're going to be great, you're going to attract warfare. If you are going to be great, you reach a level whereby people just want to fight you because they don't understand how can you be that favored? How can you be that anointed? There's a time I did a write-up. You remember about the story of Will Smith and everyone was happy that he's going through all that trouble. And I wrote how it is because this is a man who is tall, he's handsome, he's a multimillionaire. Most men will just feel jealous. They're like, me is in a kakitu, talk on everything, eh, let him now have it rough. And that is what was happening to David. You see, David was somebody, the Bible says that the women were singing, Saul has killed his thousands, David has killed his tens of thousands, and that thing in India soul. And one thing I always tell people, if you want to kill a man, Compare him with another man. That thing I especially tell ladies when I'm doing counseling for them. There's there's a lady I was even telling her to stop mentioning me so much. Like when they are talking. Because later shida. You know there are people who all the time, eh, Bishop Alisema, Pastor Alisema. I I encourage and advise ladies, please eh, Try to pamper your husband or your man. Try to leave the past out of your conversations. No matter how spiritual they are. relationship yake. Stop saying the way to the jakes and say, Majana, hey, pastor, you know, na pastor kibo. Utaachua. Utaachua. Just repeat to him the things that he said. Tell him, babe, I like the way yesterday we need to pray. I'm telling you, that man will be motivated to become more of a priest to you. But if every time una mwambia eh hey, unajua tulikuwa conference jana bishop akasema men are naturally competitive so this man will feel like he's competing with your bishop he will feel like he's competing with your pastor 
And so I tell people, don't do that. And I can say part of the reason David was hated, thanks to the ladies. The ladies are the ones who sang. Saul has killed his thousands. David is tens of thousands. Now, Akafanya, David Akachukiwa. If you check in the entire Bible, very rarely, in fact, I challenge anyone, and you onyeshe, Mali David alikuwa na issues na wamama, ama wanawake. Nowhere. David always had issues with men. When you are an alpha male, and that's why I told you the story of Will Smith, you will always have problem with other men, not with women. If you read the Bible carefully, you will notice when it comes to women, David akukwanga na issue. Walikuwa na muimbia, hey, ana dance baka mgoe zinatoka, Abigail, anakuja na mpigia magoti, hey, forgive my husband, is a fool. But when it comes to men, the things you read is, the men were talking of stoning David. That narrative has not changed up to date in the society. And that's why I was telling you this year, I feel is the year of kujificha kidogo. Just disappear from people's faces. Don't be somebody who's always on people's faces. Let me tell you, especially men will hate you. When you are too much on their faces, bibi yake ya kiongea, nasema tu, wewe, hey, unajua pasia, lisema hivi and hivi, they will hate you. So I'm not saying that you allow people to control you, but I'm, I'm preparing us because I've already seen the greatness we are walking into. I'm trying to say greatness attracts warfare. And when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king of Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. My question is, mbona wako na msearch kabla anointiwe? Mbona sasa hivi ndo umeenda na full force kumsearch? Leo ukitaka kujulikana, ukitaka kuwa famous si Kenya, I'm telling you do something great. Endo fufue maiti. Ai, watu watajua mpaka ushagu kwenye. Na wataongea mpaka vinyo uko naenda secondary school nyingine hapo ina mabati, uko naenda shule, mgutupu, ujavasu rural simply because you've done something that has shaken the nation. Today start doing mighty things that are shaking this nation. The next thing you know, they interview your siblings. They interview your parents. They want to know, eh, sasa huyu kijana mwenye anafanya miracle, anko yake anaishi aje, shosho yake anakaa aje. And that's why I told you God was taking time in building us with all these things before exposing us. Because how many remember that woman who was caught with 17 billion oil consignment? Si mnakumbuka huu mama juzi kwa kisema yu mafuta si yake. And then wakaulizwa, Mbona mnasema mafuta si yake and they said she doesn't even look like 1 billion leave alone 17 she doesn't even look like 1 billion and kawaida wa wanadamu na jealousy venye niliwaambia what was the first thing they did they brought the story of how the mummies not living properly at Yanalala nja you know what they are trying to do they always try to paint you bad i'm telling you today if i post myself with a ferrari can i assure you the next story that will be on ntv kk and all these stations they will go shago kwetu Maseme, this is Kelvin's mom's house. The mabati is leaking. There is no food here. It looks like it has not been cooked for one week. But Kelvin is in Wunda. Because they, they are jealous. They are like, kutaishaje maisha puwa. Lazimu tutafti kitu mbaya. They must look for something bad. And that's why I was saying, God has to settle us in a way we settle all our family members. Because the weakness that the enemy always uses is the loose links that you leave behind. That's why I don't believe in a pastor driving a Range Rover and members are struggling to pay rent. Because it reminds me of that story of David where they just met an Egyptian mwenye konanja. Waka muambia wetu takupea food, tuambia hatu wa meenda wapi. And when David fed this man, alisaliti group yake. Kusema mi majama mkini pay two food. Staki kusema uyo mtu most likely alitoka ili ya gani ya Kenya. Halikuwa tu food akaongea but si mnajua tu. Halikuwa tu wa huko. Kwa wapia ngependa kutumba salamu, David minapuenda. Misalibia watu wote. Mwambia ni mwini miauza. Halikuwa salamu na kwa saliti. Njue ni kwa tu food ndo ulta yake. You see when you work with people who are needy. Let me tell you the slightest bribe watakusaliti. I'm telling you when you become famous and rich. You'll experience these things. Do you know journalists? I came to learn journalists usually come and offer you money. I had a lady for a a journalist who was telling me they were given money in envelopes to go and offer some people and go and get a job to fly. When I go and say, she can 10,000. To ambi kitu juu ya jose. Eh, hey, unanza kusema, but then to ambi ki wai school kwa nafuta bangi. We unasukia tu hizi magazeti za 10 bobs meandika. Kevin was a heavy bank smoke. Kwa nishinote mijuaji. Kuna mtu wa shakula 20k. 
And it is because of the people you work with. When you work with people who are hungry, they'll be given money. Even your spouse. Please, tutafute watu unajua tunapenda humility, lakini achana na Egyptian. Ukipata ben Egyptian, atapata tu pesa kidogo akusaliti. I'm telling you this as a true story. We, we once went to help a couple who were in need. Let me not say the estate because this is going online. It's just a nearby estate here. This couple was so poor and we went with my friend because my friend was touched. I can make Kevin, you have to do something for this couple. The lady had just given birth. They had a, a baby, a small baby, and there was already another one. And they had not eaten. How can I food? Sasa sisi yao, tukaingia supermarket, tukafanya shopping ya mwaka. When we talk to this couple, the man was so broken and so honored. Akasema, hey, what can I do for you people? Like, ata sina words. Akasema, amuizi toka kwa nyumba yangu kama mjakula kitu. Because you guys have been so kind to me. So when he left to go to the shop to get milk, at least to pick a chai. The wife begins to flirt with us because I'm we have money. Imagine, the wife is like, and you know, the baby is still suckling. Imagine she's breastfeeding. You know, Manisha, it's recent. But the moment the husband and the talk and the other woman is here, these rich men are not living this place like that. Number is not going to be here. It's not going to be here. But you are having a child who is not going She didn't care. Because when you have an Egyptian, they'll always look for a thing to bring you down. Today I've told you this, the word is going to be very short because I just have one more point. Because I want us to know as we are beginning the year, God is saying, do not give up. When you find so many things coming against you, it's because you are great. Na shetani anataka u give up. The devil wants you to give up. There's a pastor who was saying that he read somewhere, this is a true story, there's a pastor who read that the Lord rewards those who diligently seek him. So when I do pastor Lenda Kafaja Nini, he took one day and he started reading the Bible from eight in the morning, Asubui. And this pastor was saying, Akwenda Mali. He read the Bible the entire day. Because he read that, those who seek the Lord diligently. So he knew because I'm seeking the Lord diligently. Eish, my blessings and yes, nakuja ni mingi. This man read the Bible and prayed that entire day. Mbaka usiku. And I said, Mbaka naenda kulala. Sasi ana ngoja gudis. Si amesoma, if you seek the Lord diligently. Imagine he sought the Lord for 12 hours continuous, straight. And this is a true story. You know what this pastor was saying? When he went to sleep, in his entire life, he has never been attacked like the day was attacked that night. I kwa nasema, at some point he knew that was the day he was going to die. Ana nyongwa. Mbaka he was asking, kwa nini nini? And then in the morning, he had the beef with God. Maka mwambia, Father, you said that those who seek you diligently, they shall be rewarded. Is this how you reward the people? Mbaka alikuwa nasema, aliambia mungu, if this is how you reward your servants, no wonder you have few. No wonder you have a few servants of God. Za, anapigia God lecture. Wewe unakuanga aje. Nyezaji kakusika lafu na nifanyi hivu. But do you know one thing this pastor said that touched me? He said that he later realized this thing. When the Philistines said that David had been anointed king of Israel, they all went up to attack him. The Lord gave him the revelation that the reason he was attacked was because he has sought the Lord diligently. So the devil was trying to discourage him from seeking God diligently. And when he knew that secret, I was say, but the second day, he even sought the Lord more. And can I tell you, most of us are fallen victims, and we are fallen prey to that tactic of the enemy. I had the bishops in Kenya in 207 when there was post-election. I could hear the leader of the bishops, Kwa TV, Akisema, the more we are praying and fasting, the more we hear post-election violence. And in fact, the more Kenya was praying and fasting, the more we were hearing the people are being burnt in Naivasha. Until one bishop said that we were in a meeting and we asked ourselves, Ama tuache kuomba mbipungue. Because the more tunawamba, moto ina. And you know that has been the oldest tactic of the devil. The more you will pray and push, let me tell you, the worse it will get because the devil is trying to discourage you. But if you push on and refuse to give up, Eventually, your motor in Azimika. I have realized it is the tactic of the devil. Anytime I pray strongly, Niki Amkanga, eh, Nisha Gongele, Kaleka Kidoleka dog, Elena Gonganga, you must kill me one to acquire my name. Na Gonga, the Shino, but Sinimoka Kumba for two hours. Alafu, Ukitaka Kuja, the devil is a liar. On the days when I'm tired, I feel I'm so tired, Bakana Sema, God, the Leo, to watch and Tomba Kesho. 
wacha nikwambie vitu zuni and they are poor mpaka nasema ah so siri nilisiombe because when they don't pray until you things go well mpaka nasema siri ni maombi maombi mafanyaje because when i don't pray hata kwa matatu conductor anasa kunitisha do mimi ndo inabidi na tuse kumkumbusha wewe but ile siku nimeomba conductor na kuarudi wewe kama utaki shuka unafi mpaka nashindwa kwa nia watu wametumwa it is because of pride and the devil wants to resist and to discourage you the days when i've not prayed oh hata unapata kuna jamu dhurwa i'm telling you the days i woke up at 3 ke hapo mudhuru inafungana and then the moment tunashuka jamu inafunguka inakuangalia na kuchekelea kwaambia wewe uko cast discouragement ndako wewe unatembea tu ukiuliza ama niko cast on the days of prayed and fasted when i go to see some wanambu amekuwa tu hapa saa hii ametoka haki ume miss tu na dakika kadhaa na mtu ni uko nikijaribu kuona on the days i've not prayed and fasted imagine mtu ana kutafuta hello kwa ni wewe tutakutana siku gani mpaka i'm like hapo misiombe it is a lie of the enemy the more you pray the more the philistines attacked and the moment david was anointed it says they went up in full force to search for him we are coming to the end the last part enye tukusoma inasema but david had about it and went down to the stronghold this is the last part of the verse we are not doing verse 18 we are only doing verse 17 for those who are joining us we are in second samuel 5:17 and i'm now on the last part that says but david had about it and went down to the stronghold there's a secret there when you are praying and things are not working and you are being opposed the secret is to go to the stronghold the problem is most believers they stop praying when you nakwambia wanasema siri ni kuacha maombi but what did david do he went to the stronghold what is a stronghold kitu nimekushika just literal meaning of stronghold it means what it, what the word is saying literally stronghold meaning you hold on to prayer strongly because una ku opposed we must learn to strongly hold when the devil wants us to lose i told you only at two points today number one was greatness attracts warfare and the last point is greatness is lonely na nimefunga kitabu yangu i want to explain that and to close what do i mean by greatness is lonely show me a truly great man show me a truly great man who has many friends and i will show you a lie hiyo ni uongo there is nobody who is ever truly great that had many friends because if where you are going is great let me tell you the road is always narrow hakuna siku greatness ishai kwa broad there is no day greatness has shared the path of broad i, I they those two don't go together that even the bible says narrow is the path that leads to salvation but wide is the path that leads to damnation hakuna siku ya biguni ni kwa kubwa na heli ka kwa konda hiyo ni uongo so we jua tu kawe ni mtu wa watu ukitembea kutoka hapa mpaka Greenspan umesalimiwa na watu 60 wewe ujichunguze uko na shida ukienda kupiga kwa mzee asema gota eh ukienda kupiga iko na wengine ah chief ni aje ukipiga ile kona pale savana ah mca we tu 2027 wewe kuna wewe quit tu for your politics <laughs> because you are a man of the people for the people and by the people but kama wewe ni mtu wa god na kuambia watu wengi wanakuanga na ku resist because you always going against the grain there's no the greatness in a mix with so many friends so that's why i've said greatness is lonely it's lonely at the top but it is worth it it is worth it because you choose whatever you want you choose the hotel you want to sleep where you want to go and pray because you have the blessing of the money but if you choose to be common like everyone else and have many friends you will be at the mercy of men you will be at the mercy of people i want to finish by saying this i used to think i'm let me say i used to believe that the strongest currency is the dollar and the british pound until i did a research and i got this through working with people who are in business and who are doing exchange of very heavy money yeah? people are exchanging money that's why they say you become like your company they shape you some things i realized i knew not because i prayed so much i knew because i operated with people who are in that system 
Imagine I came to learn that the strongest, the highest, you can go Google it, is the Kuwait, Kuwait dinner. Do you know one Kuwait dinner right now is how many Kenyan shillings? 500. So, why is it strong like that? It is because Kuwait is the leading global exporter of oil. So, its currency is ranked the strongest because there's nowhere else in the world when you're going to come out. So, we're going to pay. In fact, one Kuwait dinner is equal to $3. You can to Kuwait moja. On a three dollars, it is stronger than the dollar. But it's only that the dollar is the strongest because it's the one which is used globally everywhere. But when you come to checking the rates, you have to me one dollar say you have one fifty five Kenyan shillings. You have to me one Kuwait dinner say you have five hundred shillings. See the difference? Why oil wealth? And why is that? Because God told Ishmael when Hagar and Pata Ishmael, "I will give you wealth hidden." In secret places, oil. It is the word of God. You cannot compete with the blessing that is the word of God. It is the spoken blessing. Aliambwani sawa. Sara mikufuza. We rudi tu kuake. Lakini we kitunda kupea. Takuwa oil. No kiangalia wa Kristo ata po tu beshindo kufikia wa rabu kwa oil. These people have money. They spend. Understand when you are great, people will want to attack you. People will become envious. But don't give up. Pray. Remember that testimony of this pastor. He prayed the first day. He got an attack he has never found in his life. But when he persisted the second day, the attack disappeared. The third day, he disappeared. Until right now, he's preaching on TBN. I was actually listening to that story on TBN. Meaning, if you persist and do not give up, you will see your reward. But one thing I will assure you, the more you pray, the worse it will, be, it will become before it gets better. And which other evidence can I give you? Shadrach, Mesha, and Abednego. Siwaliomba. Instead, what happened? The fire was heated seven times hotter. Now, I have one question for you. Kwani, how hot does fire have to be to burn you? Simuru tu ni moto. And then, I was like, who is that who measured to know it is seven times hotter? Which machine? Kwani kuna fire mesha? Hakuna fire mesha? You see, the message I'm trying to say, it was all psychology, it was a mind game. They were coming and telling Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, today the fire is seven times hotter. Question is, Nani Amepima June is seven times hotter? It was just psychology, so that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego can say, eh, it was seven times hotter. Watch out to bow. We are bowing to the key. It was all psychology. Because Nani Amepima is seven times, maybe it was even ten times, who knows? Because Akuna Mali, Wanasema, they measured and they found the fire. It is all psychology. Muni na kujina kuambia saai Kenya ni kubaya. Hakuna pesa. Hakuna pesa na watu wa exchange yuko hizo makiwe dina na kuambia vivo la buying property. You see, it is all psychology. Ndo pia wuhu seme, enye we bow. We bow to this regime. Because they want you to believe the fire is seven times hotter. I don't care whether the taxes increase even the more this year. I'm from a different economy. I have to thrive in a time of famine. All the things that CNN folks are trying to do is what they are trying to do to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Every time you put on CNN, 2024 looks like a gloomy year because Israel have said the war will continue throughout 2024. So expect bad prices. We come here January 32. We say 2024 is doomed. We may give in to the sick of the enemy. We say 2024 is messed up. But kata kama kina mesha, wali muambia, we just want you to know, even if our God does not save us. Unuambia, we just want you to know, even if Israel does not stop bombing Hamas, our money is not coming from there. God anatupatia watu wenye watatite in dollars, nye ndine ni kufuata Hamas unko. So I want us to rise up on our feet, and we are going to pray and tell God. Those who are watching online, I really feel bad that you mostly miss these times of prayers we have. We even have prayers before the sermon. I pray and I hope that one day you get to come early so that you are part of this. Before we switch off for the people who are online, I just want to give a chance to somebody who's not born again. So that as we go offline, as we remember, uh, we, we, we know that there are those who are watching. Some want to start the year with God. I want us to, as we are standing, we pray together with those who are giving their lives to Jesus. If you're watching, just repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. Write my name. In the Lamb's book of life, 
I am now born again in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I want to thank you for those who have prayed that prayer, those who are watching us. Father, bless them, watch over them. I cancel every power of backsliding. I pray may you preserve them. Watch over them, Almighty Father. Let them grow in your word. Let them say, Almighty God, like your word says in Psalms, that your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Father, I bless you. I pray that you're going to be planted in good churches and good fellowships to the glory and honor of your name. We give you praise and we give you glory for it is in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen and amen. Those watching us, bye. Follow us on all social media platforms. We look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye. Have a wonderful time.